What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So as a lot of you know, PBR or physically based rendering materials are really important to creating realistic renderings inside your 3D software. Well in today's video we're going to talk about two different ways to set up PBR materials directly inside of Rhino so you can get better rendered results. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so first off let's talk about the easiest way to do this. So let's say I've got a surface like this one and I want to apply a brick material to it. Well, we want to do is we want to jump over into our um, properties on the right hand side. I'm going to go ahead and select the option for materials right here and we're just going to click on the plus button. Remember this is going to allow us to create different kinds of materials depending on what we want to do. So we've got the Rhino material library or what we're going to do in this case is we're going to create a physically based material from texture files. All right and so let's say we wanted to download this brick texture image, the Red Bricks 04 from Polyhaven. Polyhaven allows you to download a bunch of free um, resources, including free materials. But what I've done is I've just selected this and I've selected the zip file option. I've gone with the lowest resolution just because my internet connection is really slow. You can get something higher resolution if you want. But we've got this brick material. Now we want to bring it into Rhino. And so the way that we want to do that is we want to select our object and then we can go over to the materials section right here. And um, we want to click on the option for create physically based material from texture files. And so what this is going to do is this is going to give us the ability to import a zip file with multiple texture files inside of it. In this case, we're going to go with the red bricks 04 that I just downloaded. And so notice what this is going to do is this is going to find all of those files in here and it's going to try to automatically map them to the different aspects of a PBR material. So notice how, for example, it went through and it found AO and it figured out that it wants this to be the ambient occlusion map. Um, and this option right here, um, I'm not 100% sure what this one is, so we're not going to worry about it for right now. The diffuse map is going to be the base color, which is going to be the texture that makes up the surface. We have a displacement map as well as a normal map. And then we have a roughness map. So notice how this came through here and this found those materials automatically. If it doesn't do that, you can just pick from the drop down and find um, the map that you want and assign it right here. Um, and then texture mapping, real world size, we're actually going to go with surface mapping for right now, but we're going to click on OK. And that's going to create a material, specifically a PBR material from those maps. All right. So Notice how this came through and this automatically set up this material. So if I was to take this material, drag it in right here and place it on my wall, notice how it's going to go on this wall and all of the different PBR aspects of that are already set up. Now, first thing we want to do real quick is we just want to set up our UV mapping because this doesn't look very good. So I'm just going to jump over into texture mapping and we'll go ahead and just use box mapping because this is a simple surface. So I'm just going to click on box mapping click on this corner, this corner, and this corner right here. And then capped, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, and I'm going to hit the enter key. And that's going to go ahead and that's going to map this. Now our brick material looks a lot better. Um, one thing to note about that is if, if this is messed up on the end, you can just use the mapping widget real quick. And um, we're going to go ahead and hit the enter key for mapping channel one. And then you can just use the gumball, which you can turn on down here. And we're just going to use the scale function in order to scale this so the bricks on the end don't look all like scrunched up right here. So that looks a lot better. We're going to go ahead and hit the enter key. Actually, we're going to type in mapping widget off. We're going to turn the widget back off. So now if we look at this material though, notice what it's done is it's come in here and it's actually applied all of those different maps to this material. So it's got the color set up, it's got the roughness set up, it's also got the bump and the displacement set up. One thing to note about the displacement though, um, remember displacement, and we'll talk more about this in depth in another video, is going to basically use the color data in order to move things around in here. Well, we want to make sure that we've turned that on just by selecting our first option right here and going to displacement and clicking in the on button. And notice how when we turn that on, we do want to make sure that we turn the texture on here as well. So I'm just going to apply the displacement map to that. Notice how when I do that, I start getting some like ups and downs and ins and out on this, which makes this look a little bit rougher and not just like totally flat, right? And then from there, again, like we don't want to get super high into it, but I'm going to turn the sensitivity up and we're going to go back to our material and we can just kind of play around with this. So I'm going to set this to like point 
0, 1. Let's see what that does. Maybe we'll go to like a 0.1 or something like that. So with displacement, you just kind of want to play around with it a little bit in order to kind of get the result that you want. Again, I don't want to get super far in depth with that right now. Um, but just note that you can use that displacement in here if you decide that you want to do that. And so let's say that we wanted to set up a PBR material manually. Well, all you would have to do to do that is, let's say you don't have a zip file, for example, you can just click on this right here, the little plus button, and we can just import a physically based material by clicking on this option right here. And in this case, let's go ahead and call this tile. And so for my tile, I'm gonna click on my detailed settings. Notice how with the detailed settings, you can add slots for the different maps that you want in here. So in this case, right, I want slots for my base color and my roughness. Those are gonna affect the way that my material looks as well as the way things reflect. I want the bump or normal map and the displacement map. And we'll go ahead and add ambient occlusion, but then, all you have to do is just go find those materials. And so here's another series of materials I downloaded from Texture Haven, but we can go ahead and set this up, right? So I'm gonna bring the diffuse in as the texture material right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to my model just so I can see what this is going to look like. So this is what that texture is going to look like. And then as I start adding the maps in here, so I'm gonna add the roughness to this slot, for example. So the roughness is going to affect where the light actually reflects on your object, so you can see it a little bit here. So you can see how this isn't reflecting uniformly. You're getting more reflection on different parts of this than you are on other parts. So we're also gonna add the normal map. We'll go ahead and we'll add the displacement map and we'll add the ambient occlusion map. Right here, so notice how the ambient occlusion map gave us a lot more like shadows in here around the grout and other things like that. So if you have these maps, it's usually really helpful to go ahead and load them in because it's really going to affect your result. And you're really gonna see this result when you jump over into rendered mode or ray trace mode. So ray trace mode, notice how now um, this is going to simulate the way the light's coming off this a little bit better than it was before. So this isn't a great example, but notice how you are getting a better result inside a ray trace mode than you are just in regular rendered mode. So if you do decide you wanna save this material for access later, you can right click on it, click on the option for save to file. When you save it to file, you can pick a folder for your different materials. So let's say for example, I wanted a Rhino materials folder. I could just create one right here. Just call it Rhino materials. And we'll just save our tile in here. And it's gonna ask if we wanna embed our support files. So the answer is going to be yes, because we're gonna to wanna to access those later. Note that that is going to make the file size larger though. So we're gonna go ahead and click on yes, and then we can import that material later. So we can just click on this right here. You can click on import from material library, but then you can go find your own folder and bring in a material like this. So notice how it already exists in here, so it's not bringing it in. But if it didn't, then this would be an easy way to import this into your model. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought, what else you want to learn about materials in Rhino. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I'll link to some other material tutorials on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.